ELISA Lab presents the enzyme-linked immunoabsorbent assay. ELISA assays are typically done in 96 well plates. Let's see what is in the bottom of the well. A bait is linked to the plastic of the well. Our example is a sandwich ELISA for gamma interferon. The bottom of the well is populated with an antibody specific for gamma interferon. The first thing we want to do is to add the samples, controls and standards in each well. Now, we need to get closer to see what is happening into the well. In the incubation time, gamma interferon has the opportunity to bind to the specific antibody. Diluting the samples we know that the antibody is present in excess. After this step we need to do several washes in order to eliminate all the molecules not bound to the specific antibodies. A second antibody specific for gamma interferon is added. This antibody is bound to biotin. It is important to be sure that this antibody is able to bind gamma interferon bound to the first antibody. Sandwich ELISA has a high specificity since the target is bound two times by two different specific antibodies. After washing, we add streptavidin linked to horseradish peroxidase. Streptavidin will bind biotin and in this way the enzyme horse radish peroxidase will be present bound to the well in an amount that is proportional to the amount of gamma interferon present in the sample. Horse radish peroxidase enzyme has an active center with an heme group which is able to metabolize hydrogen peroxide which results in the oxidation of TMB. Colorless TMB turned to blue. The next step is to add a stop solution. The protonation of oxidized TMB makes it to turn to yellow which can be easily measured at 450 nanometers wavelength. Finally, let's come back to the real world and watch what we will see in the plate. Once the stop solution is added the color will become yellow and the intensity of the color is informing us of the amount of gamma interferon in the sample.